Hi, so in this video we're going to start talking about solving simultaneous linear equations using algebra. Now there are a couple of different ways in which you can solve these equations and basically what it means is finding values of x and y or c and d, however the equation is being presented to you. If you have a look at mathsrap.co.uk that will give you quite a lot of information about linear equations or you can follow the higher uh, videos, higher GCSE higher videos on the YouTube channel. However, for the purposes of this particular video, it's all about using algebra. So, we're given two simultaneous equations. What that means is, is that both equations are happening at the same time. So, uh, let's have a look at this, this example. We've got 3x plus y equals 20. And then the second equation we've got is x plus 4y equals 14. And what they're asking us to do is to find out the value of x and y so that both of these equations can be satisfied at the same time. Okay, so the way that we do that is by finding a way in which we can eliminate either the x terms all the y terms in order to just give us one x or one y term left. What I mean by that is that if you have a look at these, um, these equations, it's a bit like fractions. That with a fraction, what we can do is anything that we do to the top of a fraction, we also can do to the bottom. So for instance, um, two thirds is exactly the same as four over 6. There's nothing different. All we've done is we've multiplied top and bottom by 2. So it, since it also follows that with these equations, that if we multiply these equations or uh, divide them, it will give us the ability then to find terms that we can then take away from each other and reduce to 0. Okay, <laughs> I appreciate that's taken a little bit of uh, following. But um, let's have a look at it in practically what we're trying to do. So I've got two options. What I can do is I can, I can either multiply the second equation by 3. Now if I do that, I'm in a position where this will become 3x. Now if it becomes 3x, I can then take one equation away from the other and get rid of the 3x terms. And that will leave me with the y terms. The other option I've got is I can multiply the top equation by 4. Now if I do that, I've got then a 4y term at the top. In which case then I can take the equations away from each other and I'll end up with the x terms on their own. Okay, it doesn't really matter which way you do it, but I think for the purposes of this particular video, what I'll do is I'm going to multiply the top by 4. Because if I do that, I've, I'm, I know I'm going to be left with um, a value of x there, take away one single value of x. Okay, so the easiest way is to number both equations. I'm going to call that equation 1. And I'm going to call this one equation 2. Now with equation 1, I'm going to multiply that by 4. So just in the margin here, I'm going to write equation 1 times 4. Okay. Now each of the terms needs to be multiplied by 4. So what I get is this 3x becomes 12x. This y becomes positive 4y and this 20 becomes 80. So I haven't changed, just in much the same way as I have with the fractions, I haven't changed the equation. What I've done is I've just multiplied each of the terms by 4 in order to make my calculations a little bit easier. The second term is going to stay exactly the same. So here we are with the second term, and I'm going to write that in as x plus 4y equals 14. Now just a, a tip here that really it makes a lot of sense to try, as always, and you'll see in a lot of my videos, 
Um, keep the equal sign in the same place and make sure the terms are one above each other in order to ensure that you can work accurately um, and show your calculations. Okay, so now I'm in a position where if I subtract this equation from this top equation, then 4 take away 4 will give me 0, which is great because then I'm left with the x uh, value and a number value there, which means I can then calculate the value of x. So what we'll do is I'm going to say I'm going to subtract and again, I'll just make a note in the, in the margin here. So subtract 12x take away x is going to be 11x. 4y take away 4y is nothing. And then 18 take away 14 is going to be 66. Okay, so I've now got a value of 11x equals 66. And I'm sure you'll, you'll also be able to appreciate that if I now divide both sides by 11 in order to maintain the balance. And again, if you have a look at some of the algebra videos, uh, you'll see I do that quite a lot in my videos. So that will give you 11x divided by 11 is one single value of x, and that's going to equal 6. So in other words, I've now calculated a value of x that satisfies these equations. And actually, it also satisfies those equations as well because they're, not any diff they're no different. Okay, so in order for me now to work out a value of y, all I'm going to do is substitute this value of x back into, well, pretty much any one of the equations I'm going to choose. It's just common that most people will substitute it either back into 2 or back into 1, depending upon uh, the mental arithmetic gymnastics that they might need to go through. So here we are. I'm going to put it back into um, equation 1. So again, I'm going to write this on the side. So substitute uh, x equals 4 in equation 1. Now if I do that, uh, no, equation 2. So equation 2, I've got x plus 4y equals 14. So if x is 6 plus 4y equals 14, I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. Unfortunately, I've run out a bit of board space, but I'm going to end up with 4y equals 8. Um, and therefore, I'm going to be able to calculate that y equals 2. So I now have two values, x equals 6 and y equals 2, which is the solution to these two simultaneous equations. Now, if I want to prove it, I can feed these numbers back into, again, any one of the equations I've got, and they should balance. So just very quickly, if you can have a look at the top one here, if x is 6, then 3x will be 18. y is 2, so I've got 18 plus 2 equals 20. Therefore, I know I must be right with x equals 6 and y equals 2. Um, I hope that's okay for you. If it is uh, of use to you, please do post or pin or tweet. Um, you can also subscribe to the YouTube channel by clicking the link above, or you can visit matsrap.co.uk. Uh, there's quite a few different examples of these types of simultaneous equations, and I'll also be posting more videos where we've got negative terms in here. At the moment, we've just dealt purely with uh, using algebra to solve simultaneous equations where there are positive terms. Um, I hope that's okay, and um, it's been useful to you, and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.